this interview is uh, about your book on uh, African traditions and the Igbo example. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, uh, why did you write this book? My intention, my dream all my life is to show and prove that what we are getting from foreigners now as foreign ideas had its origin here. And what we have here is more complete than what we are getting from outside. They send us goods, but creation is that. And I can see it here in practice. We still have ceremonies where we demonstrate creation. And then somebody is sending what a scanty version of what we have. So I, I had this dream of educating both our people and the world over about God, man, and the universe, and how they are related. That's uh, why I wrote the book with the title, The Plan of Creation in African Tradition, Igbo version. Yeah. So you're using the Igbo as an example. So what is that common trend? The unites African tradition, the plan of creation, you know, as seen in various African traditions. What's the common trend? We'll go beyond Africa. Tradition is the same the world over because it is received knowledge. It is not planned like you call a convention or constitution and, and plan something. This is what evolved from primitive times. So it's universal. Go to America, the Native Americans, you see the same uh, tradition that, I mean, you think is a duplicate of what we have here. Go to Japan, the same thing. Go to China, the same thing. Except the more very young cultures, like the same thing, and Islam, which were planned. So theirs is something else. But any culture that evolved from remote antiquity is the same, the world over. Yeah. yeah. It's the only language that differs. Yeah. They've been called religions of conquest. Mm -hmm. Islam and Christianity have been called the religions Religion of, of conquest. conquest Rome yes. used this one yes. to expand its empire. And uh, Muhammad used the other one yes. to conquer large parts yes. of the world. Yes. You know, and... Uh, in Africa, we are assailed by both traditions. And what becomes the fate of the African system? The African system was invaded, like you are saying, by these foreign powers. Our people called them uh, primitive, these so called Westerners who say they were civilized. Our people called them. Uh, barbarians. The barbarians came and destroyed the whole. We have our prayer, which was often recited by our forebearers. Which means this negative change will not destroy us. We saw it come and we will see it go. So these conquerors. These invaders were seen as primitive uh, people by our people, whom they also call primitive. So which one is now civilized? We have a culture that evolved through the millennia, and you didn't bother to ask us, what does this symbolize? What does this you simply came and said, oh, we're satanic, just because you cannot interpret the symbols. It's, uh, it, it's really destroyed Africa. Like you're asking me, we were reduced to infants. We are now being spoon fed like infants. All what we know was, I mean, a damned evil. Imagine, imagine an adult 
starting as an infant. They say he's born again and all that. So you become an infant again. That's really, your, your entire life has been destroyed. That's the end of the world for you. So you are now starting as a baby. So what is to be done? Can we escape our African past or do we have to rediscover it and uh, kind of uh, find true salvation through that? Good. We can and we are already on it. We follow this new idea and we met um, in a stone wall. That salvation that we were promised, that um, we are in a have a loving God, who uh, an all-powerful God, who also created a second to torment his people. This idea is laughable. So it no longer satisfies the 21st century man. But we have in our tradition a loving God who is equally hostile in a way. And we have this saying, Beat a child with the left hand, draw the child to your heart with the right hand. That's what God does. So he, he is merciful in judgment. He tempers justice with mercy. That is a God Africans conceived. So we want to go back to there. That is what satis will satisfy any thinking human being. You can't tell me that uh, I'll, I love my children and I will leave them to be tormented by a monster whom I also created. That doesn't make sense. So the 21st century man will finally come back to Africa and pick the science, religion, that the philosophy that makes sense, that can satisfy both the uh, taste. I have not seen anybody record. I mean, it's only that his questions cannot be answered by a religion. Then you call him a uh, taste. That's wrong. If you, you are the ambassador of your God on earth, and we can't see your God. So answer those questions. And when you cannot answer, then you label the personal text. That's wrong. Yes. So we have the world. We, are, we have a dream that the world will come back to Africa and then start the journey again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The world is derailed. Yeah. But then at the same time, you have this revival. You also have the problem. In our African community, in Igbo land in particular, of this Pentecostal, um, you know, movement that is very hostile to tradition, that is very hostile to our traditional thoughts and practices, and they even go to the extent of destroying evidence of our material culture, and so on. So why do you think uh, Africans are crying more than the believe, you know, in, in terms of Christianity? You see, um, <clears throat> you don't limit it to Pentecostals alone. The Pentecostals are only imitating the Orthodox uh, churches, the Anglicans and Roman Catholics. In fact, the, no Pentecostals have invaded this town to destroy. It is Catholic priests who have been ravaging the place. Yeah. So Pentecostals are few in number. They don't have that strength. Now, uh, the issue of uh, crime more than debris is that you you boarded a train going to Medjugorje in Aba, and the train had a delay. Because who boarded in Aba is trying to say why the train had a delay in Portacourt. I think it is the person who boarded the, play, uh, the train in Portacourt that will be able to know why the train was there. But what you find is that people who join the Pentecostal join halfway, and then they're trying to explain what present is all about. They can't get it. Yeah. The uh, Church Council of Nice, 325 AD, established Christianity. They can't have their records. They know what they did. The Pentecostal don't know. But they swallowed the whole idea who climb and sink. And nobody, they are not ready to listen to anybody. So how do we now let them know that they don't know what Christianity is all about? Yeah. They were not there. Yeah. That's a, the challenge. Is it a brainwashing impact? Yes. And, uh, there is, uh, you, if there is uh, something beyond brainwashing, 
if we can, if there is anything beyond brainwashing, it is, it should be called by whatever. It's, it's more than brainwashing. I have said that the human being has been reduced to a robot. He no longer uses his brain. But God said you should use your brain. Question every spirit. Somebody comes and says, Jesus sent me to you. Question, that's what the Bible told us. Question every spirit. But today, people get duped. People lose their life just by a mere criminal telling you that Jesus sent I mean, that's laughable. So is there any role you see in education by the government, by the authorities to kind of uh, get the train of African culture back on track? Good. They said we have a democracy that people should, I mean, freedom of uh, thought and expression, but it's not in practice. Government should protect traditional institutions. The traditional rulers who, are, who swore on oath to protect their cultural heritage are not doing that. They're too scared about the church. So government should, I mean, uh, there should be laws. I mean, the laws are there already. Because we had this challenge here. When the Christians invaded the, the entire town and destroyed artifacts, we went to court. So the laws are there. But enforcing it is a problem. In places like America, you don't brainwash children. They, 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 it is their rights. You don't brainwash children. You don't ask them to believe in this or that. If you're a teacher, you do You go to prison. So we should have such, you don't allow your people, I mean, um, the, the multitudes, the crowds are gullible. And the purpose of government is to protect them. Yeah, you protect them. Now we have people who are not ready to, waiting for miracle, money to drop from heaven. No such things have ever happened. The one you read about man dropping from heaven is allegory. Then there's no way who can drop from heaven. In fact, there is no palace in the sky in the first place. There's no king sitting in the sky. It is, this 21st century man should have gone beyond this. So what is your book going to do? It seems to be a kind of recipe for recovery. Yes. We, it's... Um, <clears throat> um, we have seen a renaissance coming, and we are part of it. There are those who started before us. The environment was too good for them. They couldn't make their impact. Now we have seen an era where I can proudly walk around and profess to be a traditionalist and are not attacked. If you try that, I go to the law court. So those who try to revive tradition and culture before us met a stone wall. We are, we are still having challenges. We want to make it easier for those following us so that that freedom of thought and expression will be in practice.